on, hope you're all well. I'm going to put some makeup on. I'm going to my friend's for coffee. <laughs> it's nice to make an effort and she actually said she's got cake. <laughs> Hurrah! So I'm definitely going to my friend's for coffee. Um, and it's just nice to sort of put makeup on and make that effort, isn't it? Um, so yes, and I've got a lipstick. I don't know if it's going to be a bit dark actually because it's a lovely sunny day. I'm going to wear it. It's a little sample. My lovely friend Lynn is like a little, she's a cosmetic fairy godmother and she sends me little jiffy envelopes with bits in and she sent me this with a miniature chanel it's 08 or it's 80 rouge allure lac so it's a lip lacquer don't know the shade but it's it's 80 shade 80 there you go look at that teeny tiny teeny tiny fingers um so i'm going to put that on and then i'm going to sort of decide from there upwards what's going to happen to the face not a lot but once I get the lippy on, I can see where I want to go with the blusher. That's the idea. So I'm going to go in with this, which I love. It's from Peaches and Cream and it's the Goddess Illuminator. Um, I love this because it gives you that sheen. Now, I know I'm already sheeny because I've got my SPF on, which is the Summer Fridays. If you haven't seen my other video, um, I'm using this as my SPF. It's a mineral sunscreen um, because mineral sunscreens don't affect my rosacea. And it's also um, cruelty free. This is an SPF of 30 with UVA and UVB protection. Doesn't have infrared or blue screen protection um, and it's 50 mil. So that gives me a sheen. But you know me, I like sheen sheen. And this Goddess Illuminate is £7. And there's a lot out there. I love Charlotte Tilbury, but that does have a little bit of, you know, sort of glittery bits in it. Love it. This is more just adding a sheen. It doesn't really give you coverage. Where Charlotte Tilbury, it does give you a little bit of um, coverage to the face. But it's also expensive. And I think we're all, you know, we're all trying to be cautious with our pennies because there are bills to pay and you know we're sensible so this is it and it's just a pearlescent cream it is fragranced oh i just love it can you see it just gives a glow now of course you can powder down if you want to I just love it because it just, look, oh. and under makeup, you just sort of see it come through in all the right places. Now, you can do it this way, clearly, or you can add it to your base of choice, or you can just add it to the high points of your face. So if you don't want to gleam like I do, you can just add it to, you know, your cheeks, wherever you like to have a bit of sheen i just like to be super glowy um it just makes me feel better i like that look and it's it's lovely and you don't need a lot at all and as i say 30 mils for seven pounds brilliant absolutely brilliant product i love it love it love it and it feels lovely on the skin it's very lightweight blends nicely it settles nicely i don't find it reacts and causes pilling with other base products which is important um so yeah i'm very very happy with that i'm going to go in with a foundation under five quid it's on a par with any high-end foundation i've ever used just putting it out there w7 legend um lasting wear foundation I have the shade Natural Beige, which is wonderful because it has a slight grey tinge, which for me works a treat. Um, a dupe, it's a dupe for Le Mer in my mind. Now, I do have Le Mer and I love it. I have the Soft Fluid Longwear and I have the shade Neutral 22. And that's fabulous. And it's got a grey tinge, but it's also 100 and odd quid. <laughs> Just saying. So under a fiver, you can get the same results, the same colour almost from W7. I love W7 and you don't, it's popular, but it never seems to just get that, you know, get up and go. People just don't seem to embrace it enough. Fabulous. Love it. They do a lot of dupes. They're a little bit like Revolution, but they don't have that cult status. 
and they should. So I'm going to whack some of that on the old Fizzgog today. Hope you look at that. I mean, that just seamlessly, seamlessly. Just gives me my skin, but better. So I don't want, you can layer this by the way. So if you want to sort of take it from sort of a really light medium to a medium or even to full coverage, you can just keep whacking it on. It's it's beautiful. But look at that. You see, it just evens everything out that needs evening. Evening all. And I'm just literally dabbing the brush into the neck of the foundation bottle, which I have shaken. Look. Oh, and the glow, the glow. I know Lynn is probably shuddering looking at how shiny I am. Do we like the word shiny or greasy? <laughs> Welcome to the world of a greasy chip. Isn't that lovely? I just need my mirror just to have a close-up look. But that is just seamless. I mean, straight into the hairline. There's no obvious start-finish with this foundation it just is perfection absolute perfection just even now that irregularity across my face doesn't feel heavy even though it's a foundation love 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 um my new favorite Concealer, I love, 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 love this too. Revolution Pro Ultimate Radiant Under Eye Concealer. Um, it's beautiful. I have C3, which is kind of pinky. My tone has changed even in the summer. And I do get, as you know, colour. But I, I sort of went for the old yellow tone foundation, which I often reach for in the summer. And it looked a bit too custard under the old eyes so I picked something else and it's this is so beautiful and very very um comfortable to wear doesn't accentuate any fine lines it blends beautifully it's not thick it's flattering doesn't sting if you happen to get it in your eye and it does just lift that lovely oh it's just lovely again something else that just no no effort i i don't want things that you know where you're blending and you're blending and you see it and you're working at it and oh it lies too hard it's hard enough without your makeup making it difficult um so there's a thing on um tinternet at the moment um which is and don't get me wrong I'm not knocking it, even though it probably sounds like I am. There's a thing on the internet. I get I get why it's been done, which is women owning their age. Great. Good. And it's kind of this thing. I'm whatever age and I look my age. That's it, basically. So, you know, I'm 52 and I look my age. And it's all about, you know, standing up to ageism and make, you know, that kind of thing. And I get it good if that's your vibe good but my thing is um if we want to stamp out ageism maybe if we didn't talk about it so much and make it such a big thing and we talk about the number incessantly why can't we just say this is who i am and that's enough done you know this thing where depending on a person's sexuality it's almost people expect you to, you know, if you're heterosexual, oh, that's okay. You don't go into a conversation saying, oh, hi, you know, I'm Rebecca, I'm heterosexual. Um, but you'd expect, oh, you know, they're gay. Like it makes a difference for the person they are. Um, I just don't understand this need to sort of, like a number defines you, you know. Oh, anyway, I don't know. Well, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm kind of, I get it, but I'm frustrated by it. I just think sometimes we over egg the pudding. It's like the menopause, you know, great. Let's, let's talk about it. But, oh my goodness me, we're saturated with 
estrogen or the lack of it and mood swings and I mean I'm there I'm going through it I just don't want to see it every verse end and I know that's just my personal view and everybody has their own way good but let me know do you feel that you need to say my name is so and so and I'm this age and I look my age or are you a bit like me where you're just like oh for god's sake just shut up and just be who you are and stop you know, the more you say it, I just think it makes it worse. Anyway, Lippy, number 80, Chanel Lacquer. Here we go. Hmm, I like that. I'll put a bit more on in a minute. Okay. Currently, there are five people trapped in a metal tube down by the Titanic. Now, when this goes out, I don't know what will have happened. Firstly, just, just the thought of going down that deep, ugh, not my kind of thing. Um, I'm fine, I can put my head underwater, you know, I've snorkeled in the Red Sea, it's very exciting, um, even though you are thinking about sharks quite a lot. Um, I'm fine, I just don't get you know, I don't get it. Um, my husband dives and he's cave dived and he's been wedged in a cave and had to take all his dive gear off and pass it through this hole to um, the buddy he was with and squeeze himself through. Oh my goodness. Every time he tells the story to people, I just, I goosebumps, the horror of it. And the secret is to stay calm. So you don't use your oxygen in your tank up too quickly. Um, oh, it, I just, I don't get it. But, you know, these people, it's their money. Fine. Their money, what they do with it, it's their business. I do kind of roll my eyes and think more money than sense. And also... I get the fascination because I love history, love history. But I, there's a side of history sometimes that bothers me greatly. And um, the Titanic went down with a lot of souls on board, a lot of innocent people who could have been rescued, but the posh people didn't want to share their lifeboats. Let's be honest, money, it's not, a good, it's not always a good thing. It doesn't buy you common sense and it doesn't always by your kindness either so that is technically a grave of a lot of souls and it's been no i don't want to say sabotage but it's been pilfered and it's been visited and it's a sightseeing place um and that side of it does make me cringe as equally as egyptian archaeology does now i'm fascinated with egyptian um archaeology i do find it fascinating but equally i find it quite upsetting and offensive that we think it's okay now i know it's you know it was years ago it happened in the 20s and it must have been very exciting and back then you know people just went in and it's ours and claimed it and thanks very much there doesn't seem to be in a lot of thought that these people who are buried were buried with specific ideas that they were going to the afterlife and that their tombs would be sealed and it was sacred and these people are quite often nobody knows where they are but you know you've got Tutankhamun who's on view you know his his body is you know I just have an issue with that. You know, we go digging up bodies here, there and everywhere, left, right and centre, and then we put them on show. Now, you know, I just think, you know, would you feel the same if they dug your Auntie Vera up? Or, you know, Cousin Mildred and put her on show in the local museum? How would you feel about it? You know, if you're going to be buried, are you considering that, you know, you might be on a TV programme in years to come, being dug up? and you know rinsed off and put in a you know glass cube for the world to look at makes me i'm 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 discombobulated about the whole thing because i do love history um but i just think there's a time and a place and i mean i love a good graveyard i like a cemetery but 
respectfully the people are where they should be um i don't necessarily want to go breathing on glass gawping at a corpse that thought it was going to be buried and safe and respected for eternity hmm. that's all i'm saying so the titanic i mean i get the feeling there's a lot of hollywood executives at the edge of their seats thinking this could be a really good film either way but imagine if they do rescue them mm. i wonder if they've got tom tom hanks on line one just waiting it must be horrendous to be trapped and probably not really knowing what the heck's going on in that tiny space and maybe avoiding thinking about what could happen but also for the family and loved ones living each day through this with the reality that they may be down there forever um sort of an irony irony in it isn't there really that if they aren't rescued they will be down there and will equally be part of the sightseeing that goes on with the Titanic, an exhibition itself, an exhibition of people who went to view the Titanic are now part of it. Um, it's just awful. It's just awful. But there is that other element of it as well. And also, it looks like it was built in somebody's shed. You know, it's run off like a PlayStation handheld thing i mean just hello and i'd like to know if anybody else when they heard about it after a few minutes of going oh gosh that's really really terrible does what i tend to do on these situations my question is where's the toilet how do they go to the toilet anybody else do that let me know right I don't want to make light of it because it's five lives and it's terrible, but still more money than sense in this case, I believe. Revolution Pro Glam Eyes. I love this. I may have to get more. I don't know what the colour is. It doesn't tell me anywhere. No, it doesn't. Or the writing is so tiny. Liquid Chrome. Maybe that's the colour. So you have a pencil and you have... A lovely liquid eyeshadow. I'm going to put the pencil along my lash line. So that's happening. So there'll, there'll probably have been an outcome by now. Bearing in mind that I think their oxygen runs out. Today? Tomorrow? I can't imagine. How, well, how do you come to terms with that? Maybe you don't. Awful 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 i mean my my husband wouldn't pay to do something like that but he would do something like that because he has no fear um and as i say he's cave dive which i think is completely bonkers in itself you know he's he's you know he's been surrounded by sharks he's he's just no fear at all so he would do it as long as he didn't have to pay 200 and odd thousand pounds which is just an obscene amount of money but if you're a billionaire i suppose it's to him just like us spending maybe a tenner or 20 quid you know it's probably pin money we just can't imagine that that's all you could think to do with it um anyway oh that's so i love this i have to say this is something i'm reaching for a lot if i'm going to do my eyes i do like just this little bit that this adds so the gel actually does dry down but you do have manipulation time so you have time if you want to do it with your finger it dries quicker with your finger because you've got sort of flesh on flesh and it warms quicker if you want more time to manipulate it use a brush um but use a dual phase brush because otherwise, if you use sort of a real hairbrush, it won't wash the product out as well. Oh, I love that lippy. 
Hmm. Right, a mascara that I adore. So my love of mascaras has changed a little bit. My lashes have definitely become, they're still long, but they're not as, there's not as much, as many of them. And so I'm really liking, although I do like my horse lash mascaras, um, Leona and I love a good whore lash. Um, I am liking the telescopic mascara from L'Oreal, which has been out for donkey's years. And it's got a brush that you probably think, Rebecca, you don't like brushes like that. Oh, but I do. And that noise, by the way, is my stomach rumbling. Not had breakfast. Right. I think my eyeshadow is just about dried off. I'm going to curl my lashes. Don't look. Those of you that know how I curl my lashes, those of you that don't, you're in for a big surprise. However, if you don't like anything that's eye related, look away. And I'll tell you when I've done it. So pushing them up under the hooded lids there you see silver lining with hooded lids they're a natural eyelash curler okay and you can look back and they pop out all curled can you see look at that brilliant right what else have i got to tell you uh any other not, <laughs> any other disasters that i'd like to share with you today on this sunny day um Gosh, my stomach's really going for it. I do apologise. I can't think of anything else. Glenda Jackson's passed away. I like Glenda Jackson. I was watching an interview with her only a couple of months ago. She's a fascinating lady. Wonderful career. And of course, if you're my kind of age, you may remember that there she was, this very serious actress. She'd won an Oscar. And there she was, living it up with Morecambe and Wise, which she absolutely clearly felt was one of the best things she'd ever done. And how lovely to hear that. She clearly had the most marvellous time, so much so that she did it twice. Um, so, yeah. And she played King Lear. I think Kenneth Branagh is playing Lear. Now he's that bit older. There's a role for everybody in Shakespeare, isn't there? So, yeah. Um, what else have I got to tell you? Look at that. Oh, I mean, Leona, if you're watching this, I mean, I know you have mascaras that you love, but look, even though it's not a great big horse lash brush, look how it really separates, but it elongates, but it really puts a lot of product on there if you want it to you can adjust the amount here she comes can you hear her betty has arrived right i'm gonna use what blush am i going to use because the lips have a sort of pinky tone but i don't want there to be too much from the blush that's a bit off. I'm going to use this Tom Ford Pink Sand. Yeah, it's got a bit of warmth to it. So I don't need it to be too... That's it. That's it. There she is. My stomach. There she is. Okay. Oh, lovely. Just with a sponge. It's quite dry, that sponge. I'm still loving the glow. Can you see that lovely glow? Oh, but I am going to put a powder over. So I'm just using up various powders at the moment. And this is the By Terry CC powder. I've got apricot glow and an itch. Um, anything else? We've had lovely hot weather. We've had dolphins. The baby seagulls have hatched. We haven't got that many this year. We are very, very low on the ground with nesting seagulls. So if I look across there, there's one with its mummy and daddy. There were two. I don't know what happened to one of them. It does keep rolling off the top of the roof, but it's got really strong legs because it does get it back to the nest, thank goodness. Because if it didn't, I don't even want to imagine because the drop is, is quite extensive. 
so I look tentatively and always hope it's got back. Then there's one um, to the back of us. You may remember last year we lost three and it's the same seagulls because they do tend to come back and they mate for life as well. And they had two babies this year. Now, again, another one's disappeared. One of them has fallen off the roof, right off the roof, survived. And luckily it's in the garden of some neighbours who are really lovely people and um, they just leave it and the parents fly down when they know it's safe and look after the baby and hopefully it will take off within the next couple of weeks because they often do go on the floor and they just need their space um, and I'm always relieved when it lands in that garden because we have some horrible neighbours who hate seagulls and will quite happily just shoo them into the direction of a moving vehicle. Um, uh, anyway, that's where we're at. But the parents, um, I mean, they're, they're quite familiar with me and I always talk to them so they know I'm not a threat to their baby. So they do sort of land on our roof and look at me and I always say it's me it's fine and I ask them how their baby is and how is it going and they're pretty pretty chill but I can always tell when there's somebody out there that they don't really know because they really kick off because all they're doing is protecting their baby simple as that people think that they are deliberately being aggressive a bird doesn't get up in the morning and think right I'm going to be really nasty to loads of humans a bird responds to humans you know if you don't want a bird to steal food out of your hand when you're at the seaside, my advice is to sit down if you're going to eat and sort of sit over your food so you don't make it obvious that it's there. Um, unfortunately, birds have learnt because we have fed them. It's our fault that they come and grab food. They don't realise how scary they are to us and they don't realise that they could hurt us. They're just doing what they've learnt over time. It's a bit like sharks. People feed things to get things to come to them when they're in the sea. And sharks, you know, mosey around and see these interesting whatever they are. And they have food. And they have a nibble. And sometimes they see this thing. Oh, it's one of those that feeds things. I'll just have a bit of a taste. Um, we never want to admit our own... Um, place in things do we but generally 90% of the time it's our fault just saying anyway so seagull babies fingers crossed some of them will make it but we've literally only got um one set of parents that have got babies this year used to be every roof where I live nothing just one set of parents one set across there there were a couple on another roof and I don't know whether the there were no eggs I don't know what happened the nest's there but the parents just left so I don't know what happened with that one maybe they just didn't have babies this year but we're definitely low on the ground and they are protected just to be clear seagulls are protected um and once they've nested, you're not allowed to sort of clear the eggs and nest away and stuff like that. But people do, because I've seen them do it. Don't get me started. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that makeup. Look at that glow. Oh, glow, glow, glow. Love it. You could put more on. So if you used a loose powder with a powder puff, you could work that down. But I don't want to at all but i love this um you can find the details they're on instagram they're on tiktok um i've ordered from them it was so quick literally i ordered and a day later it arrived seven pounds i think delivery was free as well that time um brilliant one of the best illuminators i've ever used i love it and i find it more flattering than using powder now there we go all done all dusted hope you're well Take care, lots of love, that's it.